out. I know the Lord will bring me out. I fell down on my knees. Lord, have mercy, please. Got a singing, shouting victory. Oh, victory is mine. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make a miracle work, a promise keep Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, we make a miracle work, a promise keep. Ah! Uh -huh. 
everybody. Oh, that sounds a little bit better. Praise God. God bless each and every one of you. And y'all are some brave, bold soldiers to come out here on this Sunday with these kind of weather conditions. Y'all are brave and bold. But I'm glad you came because I knew I was going to be here. And I'm glad I'm not here by myself. So thank you for coming. Thank you for your continued giving and support. And thank God for allowing us to yet have church despite the environment, despite we're going, what we're going through with the COVID-19 virus. We can only give thanks to God for that. Here it is, January 2021, and we're still having church. We can't go on the inside, but do you know in Jesus' day they had most of their church services on the outside? Oh yeah. So when you get to heaven, don't go up there bragging about you had church in the rain. Because <laughs> that ain't no persecution. <laughs> Amen. The apostles are going to laugh at you if you go out there with your testimony. Well, you know, we had to have church in the rain one day. That ain't going to cut it. Because them apostles, they suffered a lot more than raindrops falling on your head. Right. Amen. So let me hurry along because I don't know how long we're going to be getting this drizzle. It might, it might downpour, so I want to go ahead and, and get through. Because if it gets too good to me, even if it downpours, I'm going to keep preaching. Yeah. Amen. Y'all can roll your windows up. Amen. But you don't have to leave. You in your car. So I do have a word today for you that are here and for those that are at home that will see this message on Facebook and YouTube and some will see it by way of DVD because I send DVDs to everybody that are not on Facebook and YouTube. And what I want to tell you today is we need to hear from the Lord. Let me say that again. We need to hear from the Lord. That's one of the greatest benefits that we have as Christians, as believers. We are privileged to be able to hear from God. Hearing God's voice is the key to being successful and victorious in this life. Hearing God's voice allow us to make good decisions for ourselves, for our families, and for those that we minister to. It's so important to hear God's voice. Now, there are a lot of people in this world that are not interested in hearing God's voice because of their indulgence with sin. If you're living in sin, you don't want to hear from God. You're like Adam and Eve. After they sinned, they ran from the voice of God. They heard the voice of God walking in the garden, and they took off and hid themselves. Well, there are many people in the world today, they won't come to our church. They won't let us witness to them. They don't want our tracks. Amen. They don't look at our Christian programs because they don't want to hear from God because of the sin that's in their life. Now, then there are others. There are other folk that mis misrepresent 
the voice of our God. As false prophets, they lie saying God said this, and God never said it. They run to and fro prophesying, saying God said, yea, yea, God said. And the Lord lets us know, I didn't say that. They say I said it, but God says I didn't say that. But every believer must be able to hear from God for themselves and not depend on someone to prophesy to you. So I want to talk a few minutes about how we hear the voice of God. And this is nothing new to you because I've taught you this over the years. So this is not going to be new to you, but it's a reminder, it's an exhortation and a reminder lest we forget, let's understand how we hear from God in this new dispensation, in this church age. And let me start with Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, where it says, God at sundry times, that's various times, God at various times, and in many different ways, diverse manners, he spake in times past to our fathers, by the prophets. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So this is showing a, a difference, a change, a shift. In the Old Testament, it was all about the prophets. But in the New Testament, it's about his son, who he appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds by his son. Now, keep in mind, in St. John chapter 1, the scripture says that the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father. So when it says that God is speaking to us by his son, what they're saying to us is that God is speaking to us by his word. Amen. St. John chapter 1 says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father. And then in Matthew 17 and 5, many of you are familiar with the scripture, the Mount of Transfiguration. You've read it where Jesus and his disciples were with him. And Jesus stepped up on the mountain, and as he stepped up, there appeared unto them Moses on one side of Jesus and Elijah on the other. Now Peter got excited, those of you that read the story, Peter got excited about seeing Moses and Elijah. And he said, he said to the other disciples and to Jesus, let us let us build three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. He got excited. You know how we get zealous sometimes, and we want to do stuff without hearing from God. But God spoke from heaven, and when God spoke from heaven, Moses disappeared, and Elijah disappeared, and Jesus was left by himself, and the voice spoke and said, This is my beloved son. Hear ye him signifying to us that a change in God has been made. A new shift has come in. Amen. Whereas we used to depend on the prophets to bring us the word of God, now God is saying, I'm speaking to you through my son. And the son is the word of God. In St. John chapter 6, Jesus continually reminded the disciples and the Pharisees that were listening to him that you've got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood blood. My, my flesh is, is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed. And, and some of his disciples left him because they thought he was crazy. Jesus tried to explain to them that I am the bread from heaven. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness. I'm the true bread. I'm the real bread from heaven. Any man eat of me, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood shall live forever and what they did not understand is that he was talking about himself 
as the Word made flesh. So they thought it was, they thought it was something weird for him to say, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. But what he was saying is, you need to consume the Word of God that was made flesh. And I am that Word of God. Those of us that study our Bibles, we know that Jesus is the Word of God. Amen. Second Peter 1.19 says that we have a more sure word of prophecy because of Jesus Christ being the Word of God. In the past, the, many people were deceived by the prophets. But we have a more sure word of prophecy, and we need to apply that to our lives and to our church services today. We need to understand that the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you got to be born again. Because unless you're born again of the spirit, you can't enter the kingdom of God. You can't be a part of the kingdom of God unless you're born again of the spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said again in St. John 6, 63, he said, it's the spirit that quicken, make alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, the word of God, the scripture, they are spirit and they are life. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, and this is why we must understand how we hear from God. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, as it is written, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither hath it entered into the, to the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them to us. God hath revealed, look at this, revelation from God. He reveals it to us by his spirit. So if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, then when God reveals, you can't hear. When God reveals, you, you don't know what he's saying. God is speaking, but you can't hear it. God is speaking, but you're not listening because you don't have that born-again Spirit on the inside of you whereby now God can speak to you and you can hear his voice because the things of God are revealed by his Spirit. Believers must know that the reason we have an inner spirit, the reason we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever, the reason we are born again of that scripture, of that word, amen, is so that God can communicate to us. And the, and the ultimate process for God communicating to believers is in their inner spirit. Even when the preacher is preaching, you need to hear God in the spirit. Even when the prophet is prophesying, you need to hear God in your inner spirit. That way you'll be able to discern the spirit of error from the spirit of truth. You'll be able to discern the difference between a false prophet and when the truth is coming. Here's what it says in 1 John 2, 27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. This is what the scripture says about you as a believer. The anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. Every believer gets this anointing whereby you need not that any man teach you. Now you still need the apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers. But what you have to understand is that it's the anointing that's really teaching you all things. It's the anointing that's giving you the truth. And, and, it, and the anointing will make sure you don't get a lie. Amen. The, more, the anointing will abide in you and teach you. So, so accordingly, your success in God. Hear me, people of God. Your success in God is not just because you have a good preacher, a good pastor. Your success in God is based on the fact that the Spirit of God is in you 
and it allows you to hear the voice of God. Oh, thank God for good preachers, good pastors, good prophets, evangelists, and teachers. Thank God for them. But there are many people that sit under their ministry and don't get nothing. Because it's not about how good they are. It's about what's in you. It's about Christ in you. It's about you being strengthened with might by his power in the inner man. It's about what's in you. Good preacher, bad preacher, don't matter. If you got the right stuff on the inside of you, you'll know when the preacher is bad. You'll know when the, when the, when the message is in error. And you'll know when there is truth. And when the Spirit of God is in you, you can get that same truth when you read the Bible. You can get that same truth when someone testifies, when someone bears witness to the truth, because of what's in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, that anointing which you have received, it abided in you. So your success is based on you having the Spirit of God in you, and therefore you can hear his voice. And we all need to hear his voice. Amen. Amen. You often hear people talking about, I need to get a good word. I need a word from the Lord. I'm, I'm going to run down here to this church and get a word. I'm going to run down there in this church and get a word. It's not about who's down there and who's cross town. It's about what's in you. Because if you've got the Spirit of God in you, you're going to be able to hear God's voice. God is going to find a way to speak to you and deal with you because he has the responsibility of revealing unto you by his spirit the deep things of God. I say he reveals to you the deep things of God, but you got to have something in there. It's like, it's like in baseball when the pitcher pitches the ball, the catcher has a catcher's mitt where when that ball comes across that plate 100 miles an hour, he can catch it in that catcher's mitt. Amen. If he ain't got no catcher's mitt, he going to duck. He's going to duck because he can't catch that ball that fast with his bare hands. He's going to duck. Amen. And there are a lot of people ducking because they don't have what they're supposed to have. And we, we're trying to tell them to leave holy tell them to live righteous and they can't live holy and live righteous because they don't have the spiritual catcher's mitt in their life to catch the truth of God's word amen. oh boy that, that you know what I felt good when I preached that right there amen, amen that was a good word <laughs> but we have that spiritual catcher's mitt where God can sling stuff at us amen spiritual stuff he can sling it at us and we can receive it. Amen. The natural man receiveth not the things of God. But we that are spiritual, we can receive from God. Because we've got his spirit in our inner man. And let me close with two more concepts. First of all, in John 8, 47, it says, He that is of God heareth God's words. He that is of God, here is God's words. Now, by default, that means that those that are not of God can't hear his words. And what the word does for us as believers, the we reason we keep coming to church to hear the word of God, the reason we study to show ourselves approved unto God, the reason we meditate in the word of God, the reason we look at the DVDs and, and, and hear the tapes, is because we want to develop something spiritual on the inside of us. And what the word develops in us is, is, is first of all, there's a spiritual intuition. You ever heard uh, people talk about women's intuition? Sometimes women mothers have been known to, to know when their child is in danger. The child may be way across town, the child may be in school, the child may be out on the playground, but they have been mothers that have been known to get an intuition 
I need to go to my child. I need to go see about my child. Intuition. Now, I don't know how true or how good women intuition is, but I know that in the spirit, there is a spiritual intuition that works by the Holy Ghost, whereby we can have knowledge without any help from our mind. I mean, this ain't got nothing to do with education. This ain't got nothing to do with intelligence. There is a spiritual intuition that can be developed in any child that's been born again of the Spirit of God. You can develop a spiritual intuition where God can give you an unction of something that you had no way of knowing. You weren't supposed to know this. You didn't know this on your own. But God, through his spirit, gave you an unction, an unction from the Holy One, and therefore you had knowledge uh, that you didn't achieve on your own. So that's number one. That's one of the ways that we hear the voice of God through intuition, through, through the spirit of God that develops intuition in us and gives us an unction. Meditating in the Word of God and studying God's Word will help you develop that. It also helps you develop a communion. The Word of God helps you develop a communion, a oneness with God and with Christ. Whereby, as it says in Romans chapter 8, the Spirit bath witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So no matter where we go and no matter what we get involved in, and no matter what we have to face, through the word of God, we develop this communion with God where no matter what happens, we can say out loud, loud, I am a child of God. When people criticize us, when people try to sling mud at us, when folk try to condemn us, we have that spirit of communion on the inside of us where we can proudly say, I am a child of God. I can't say that I'm perfect. I can't say that I'm all that I ought to be. I can't say uh, that I look good in your eyes, but there's one thing that I can say without a doubt. I am a child of God. <laughs> Every time you tell me I'm not, his voice speaks to me and reminds me that you are my child. I am your father. Hallelujah. So this is the kind of this is the kind of process that we all need to be engaged in. We need to be hearing the voice of God for ourselves in these times. I can tell you this. What we went through in 2020 could be worse in 2021. And for those of us that are still around in 2022 and 2023 and on, you could be seeing some things that you never imagined, experiencing some things as you never imagined as we swiftly approach the tribulation period and the rapture. Things are already being set in place for that kind of thing to happen. And your strength is going to be your ability to be led by the Spirit of God, to hear from God, to hear God's voice, to know what to do, where to go, who to deal with, who to avoid. And the Word of God develops that ability on the inside of us. Can you say praise the Lord, somebody? We need to hear the voice of God. That's what Adam and Eve had in the garden. We talk a lot about how they didn't get sick. And they had all the trees of the garden that they could eat from. But the most valuable thing that they had in the garden of Eden was that the voice of the Lord would walk with them. The voice of the Lord would talk with them in the cool of the evening. Amen. And I don't know about you. I know that there may be some times that you don't have no money. But if you've got the voice of the Lord in your life, there may be some times that you might not have no friends. But if you got the voice of the Lord in your life, yeah. <laughs> ah, you're going to be all right. Because as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. So I'm through. Amen. Thank God for that word for us that we can take with us when we leave, when we pull out in the parking lot. 
We're going to leave with something that we didn't have when we came. Amen. Amen. And don't forget that this same word is going to be posted on Facebook and YouTube. And if that's not enough for you, you can call me and I'll send you a DVD so you can watch and listen over and over again. Because man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. Remember that as we go through trials and tribulations in these last days. Yes. Man shall not live by bread alone, the Lord. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for Amen. giving me this space, holding back the rain yes. until I could get this word out to the people. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Our Father, I thank you that you have enabled us to fellowship, to come together, to still come together and glorify your name, yes, even in the midst of this virus environment, we thank you that you've made space for us to still come together. And we thank you for keeping us safe, for protecting us. And we give you the glory and honor and praise for it. I pray, Lord God, for those that are sitting in their cars, those that have come together with us today here in this parking lot, I pray for those who are at home, who will be listening by way of television, computer, smartphone. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them, exhort them, edify them, comfort them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whoever would see or hear this word and believe, I pray, Lord, that you would grant them repentance if needed, salvation if needed, and give them guidance, give them conviction, so that they can become a child of the Almighty God. We thank you for your love and grace and mercy. We thank you for your protection as we travel the highways back to our several destinations. In Jesus' name, may we continue to be able to come together Amen. and fellowship and exalt your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Can I get a honk on the horn? Hallelujah. Amen. I wish I could scream as loud as your horn is screaming. <laughs> but God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving. Thank you for supporting. And be blessed, you and your families and your children and your grandchildren. Amen. Your friends, loved ones, relatives. Amen. Your neighbors, your dogs, your cats, all of them. Be blessed in Jesus' name.